in your science notebook today, you're going to open to the table of contents. In the table of contents, you should have already done solar system data on page 81 and earth and space on page 82 and 83. Those were previous pages or previous um, pages that you did on your own by doing a little bit of research. Now, today you're doing Up in the Wonderful Sky, and that's going to be page, my pen's not working, page 84 through 85. Your other pages where you did your research on page 81, 82, and 83 should already be glued. Those were done, I believe, last week. So this is page 84, Up in the Wonderful Sky, and then page 85, which is part two of Up in the Wonderful Sky. So you need to get those pages glued down and then answer the questions as you watch the video. All right, so for our lab today, Up in the Wonderful Sky, I have two flashlights here. I'm going to turn them both on and hopefully not drop them. So I have both the flashlights, both identical, both the same size. Um, and if I hold them on the wall, you will notice that they both have a uh, the same size circles of light that they're putting on the wall. But if I move one closer to the wall and hopefully it doesn't roll away, it's rolling. There we go. And I move the other one further away from the wall. So we have one flashlight that's closer to the wall and one flashlight that's further away. You should notice that the light that is closer, which is the light on this side, is brighter. It's more distinguished, it's easier to see. You can see nice pretty circles. The light that's further away, which is this right here, it's not as bright and it's kind of all spread out. It's not as many details that you, you can see in it. What objects in space are we able to see as brightly lit objects? We are able to see stars as brightly lit objects. Um, we can see planets and moons, but are those brightly lit objects? They're actually reflecting light from the sun. But in the night sky, we can see stars as brightly lit objects. Which star is the, appears the largest and brightest to us from Earth? So which star appears to be like the close, like the close flashlight and its largest and brightest? That's our sun. Our sun appears to be the largest and brightest. That's the one that we see so brightly in the sky. When we look at the other stars in the sky, they just look like little dots in the sky. They don't look large and bright. They look further away, like the further away flashlight. Are there stars in our galaxy that are larger and brighter than the sun? Yes, there are. There are stars in our galaxy that are larger and brighter than our sun. Um, you could do some research and come up with some of the names of stars that are larger and brighter than our sun is. And then finally, using what you learned in the flashlight demonstration, explain why the sun appears to be the largest and brightest star from our perspective on Earth. Well, the reason that the sun appears to be larger and brighter is because it is closer to us, like the closer flashlight is. So it appears to be larger and brighter because it's closer to us like that flashlight. That's why the, the sun appears to be larger and brighter. But in all actuality, there are stars that are further away, like the this flashlight right here, and they just don't appear to be um, as large and bright, but they are actually are larger and brighter. They're just further and further away from us. So in the first part of the video, you guys did a lab where you saw how different other stars are actually bigger and brighter than the sun, but they don't appear to be bigger and brighter than the sun because they're further away from us. So now we're going to look at how Earth um, interacts with the sun. So Earth does two things. First, Earth rotates on its axis. That means it spins just like this. So it's rotating on its axis. The other thing that Earth does is it revolves around the sun. So as it's rotating on its axis, 
that is also revolving or going around the sun. The path that it takes around the sun is elliptical. It's kind of like an oval, it's not a circle, it's more like an oval. So two things happen. When the earth rotates, that is what's giving us day and night. So here's North America where my hand is. North America is where we live. Right now, North America is experiencing daytime. As the earth rotates, well now North America is experiencing nighttime because it's away from the sun. Um, as earth revolves, since the, path, since the path, the orbit that earth takes is elliptical, there are different times of the year where earth is further away from the sun and where earth is closer to the sun because it's an elliptical path. It's not um, a straight circle where it's the same distance from the sun at all times. And that is what gives us the different seasons. When we're closer to the sun, we have more direct sunlight. We're actually getting um, summer. When we're getting indirect sunlight, we're, get, we're having winter. And we're going to go into more detail in another lab, but I do want you to know that when the northern hemisphere is experiencing summer, the southern hemisphere is actually experiencing winter and vice versa. The, oh, that's the other thing. Okay. So is the sun moving? No. The sun is stationary. The earth is what's moving. It's moving two different ways, rotation and revolution. Um, the sun doesn't move. Do other stars in our solar system move? No, they do not. You should already know from your research that groups of stars that form a pattern are called constellations. Those constellations aren't moving just like our star isn't moving, but we are moving. So those constellations, when we look in the night sky, they're going to appear different. If we have a constellation over here, um, it's going to appear one way in our night sky versus when the earth revolves around the sun and it's way over here, then that same constellation is going to look different in the night sky. But remember, the stars nor the sun nor the constellations are moving. The earth is what's moving. 